Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 150 and we have a good one for you today. Today is one of those very special videos that I really hope you enjoy. Some of you may not, may, may not, but I personally enjoy putting this video together and I think it's really important. Today's fish that we're going to be talking about is no fish at all no fish at all today is actually an educational video on fish morphology the reason why i'm putting this video together is so often in these videos i'm talking about look at the dorsal fin look at the anal fin look at the lateral line look at the snout and while those things are a little more common and you can definitely figure them out there's still things that i talk about that for people who are not familiar with fish or the scientific world, they might have a problem um, understanding on that. So today's video is the fish morphology, or sorry, the morphology of fish used in sort of their diagnostic characteristics. So why, what we're looking at in the fish to make it there, to make it that fish, basically. So. The first thing we're actually going to talk about is body shape. I have talked about body shape numerous times because it's very important. Um, the body shape, many of these are actually in cross sections. So if you looked at the fish head on, this is what it would um, look like. So there's a couple of different kinds that we need to go over. Um, the first one, we have a lot of pictures to go through. A lot of pictures to go through. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is fusiform which is an oval so think of a tuna a tuna is kind of ovaled but still very very thick um it's really hard to get a picture of a fish head on so you got to just kind of imagine so fusiform is going to be that cylinder that i talk about that sort of cigar shape that i talk about um usually heavily streamlined or heavily hydrodynamic and usually very powerful sharks would be another mini sharks would be another example of this um, another one that we talk about oops is um compressiform these are going to be things like your sunfish compressiform are fish that are compressed laterally so from the side to the side um, they're compressed these are going to be your pancake fish your sunfish Flounders, that very important to know. Um, sorry, I'm gonna have to drink some coffee to keep on going with this. But, um, so these are your compressed fish. They have been compressed from the side. Depressiform is compressed from the back to the belly. Those are gonna be your skates, your rays, and things like that. Remember, flounder are technically compressiform because they are compressed from side to side. The eye migrates to one side of their body and they're laying on their side. They are not actually um, from back to the belly. So this is your depressiform fishes. Anguilliform are gonna be your very thick circles, but they're circled. They're not really the oval shape of um, like the tuna and everything, a little bit taller than wide. Anguilliforms, especially towards the front of the body, are going to be really thick circles. In fact, anguilliform, if you remember, anguilliformes is the family, oh sorry, anguillidae is the uh, family of eels, one of the family of eels. So it's no surprise that they have a relatively unique body shape. Um, then there's another one that's kind of based around eels called filiform. These are your snipe eels. These are circles, but very, very thin circles. Um, strings, string beans. Um, these are just super elongated, very small eels. They don't have to be very small, but very thin eels. Very, very small. Then there's taniform. I'm definitely saying this wrong. Taniform which is your elongated sort of compressiform. Um, that's not exactly, but that's how I remember it. So your taniform fishes are gonna be things like your bowfin, 
which are almost fusiform. And uh, I would argue kind of that they are fusiform, but they have kind of flattened sides. They're still oval, very much oval, and then they sort of flatten down the sides and then their body is oval. These are definitely the, the cylinder balls of muscle that I talk about all the time um so it's a lot of information we're going over through a lot of information you might have to watch this video a couple of times but the tana form is how i remember um a elongated compressed form is how i remember tana form um take that tuna and kind of stretch it out you get something like a bowfin um even though tuna are much bigger it's just how my mind works Definitely not. I do have one more to talk about. It's very, very unique. The globiform, which is just a ball. It's just a ball. We've talked about these before. These are the lump suckers. I don't think there's any other globiform fish in the world other than lump suckers. They're a weird old fish. So, yeah. If it's a ball, globiform. So now we're going to talk about body regions. That's the next thing we're going to talk about. And I found this really neat, um, really, really neat sort of a diagram here. Um, we're not going to go all of these, but let's go over the important regions. So there's sort of like three important regions that are consistently talked about in fish diagnostics, um, especially for um your kind of basic diagnostic fish and that's going to be the snout which i hope everyone can kind of figure out the snout it's the nose of the fish um the nape of the fish which is going to be from the head to here this on the back on the back just like the nape of your neck same as the nape of the fish here and then the caudal peduncle which is the area where the body of the fish meets the tail fin the caudal fin and allows um you look at that that there's a lot of usually a lot of either there's coloration there there's lack of coloration there um there's a lot of focus on the caudal peduncle because it is a very important very important part of the fish then you have the sides you have the dorsal side which is towards the back of the fish. So if you drew a line halfway down the fish and went up, that would be the dorsal side of the fish. The ventral side is what we would call the belly side of the fish. So below that midpoint, that midline, that's gonna be your ventral side. Then you have your anterior end, the forward end, um, towards the head, and posterior end. So front, back, sorry, front, behind, back, belly. Then obviously you have your lateral sides, right and left lateral sides. Um, and those are usually based on like, oh, they are laterally compressed. So compressed form, compressed side to side, compressed laterally, right to left. Um, now the next sort of body region that we're gonna be talking about um, is going to be the, um, I don't know why this fish is here. I'm going to be honest. I don't know why I put this picture here. Oh, it's another way to look at the snout. This is a picture I meant to use to look at the body region. Sorry. The snout, the nape, um, the caudal peduncle, very thin as compared to the last one. Um, dorsal, ventral, anterior, posterior, blankety blink. Um, yeah, sorry, that's why we were, I had this picture here. We weren't supposed to be looking at the last diagram for the body regions. But another one I wanna talk about is the lateral line region, which it's, it's kind of difficult to see here, but if you can look closely, you notice that there's the lateral line is right here. 
and it's a visible line along the side of the fish that consists, consists of sense organs. That's the one we talk about where the lateral line, they have the pressure sensing organs that allow the fish to navigate through their environment and help determine if they have predators nearby or not. What is larger? That is why, you know, people talk about um, bass don't seem to be scared by lures. Why would they? Because they can sense through the lateral line system that that thing is not bigger than them. So they don't really have to be scared of them. Um, unless they're bait shy or lure shy or things like that. It, but the shape of the line can be very indicative. Um, not only the shape, but its presence in general. So darters, in fact, a lot of times have a, um, have a, oh my goodness, what's it called? I'm blanking now. Um, interrupted? I wouldn't call it interrupted, but incomplete. There we go. It's an incomplete lateral line. Um, and I believe this is one of the darters that do that. If you go down here, the lateral line sort of stops down here. So it's an incomplete. It does not go from the head all the way to the dorsal fin. If we go back to this one, you can kind of see it on this picture, the lateral line. It's these light scales moving along the side. And those lateral lines extend all the way to the tail. Well, it doesn't happen really here. So there's other ones that can be very indicative of the fish greatly decurve which would be the golden shiner and interrupted like the um texas cichlid um in fact let's very quickly go look at the texas cichlid and see if we can look see the lateral line what a awful picture not much better. Okay. It's really hard to see here. But right along this side, there's a lateral line. But it stops right here. And then it starts again, basically in line with this, but it extends back. But it, they've got a break there. So it's an interrupted lateral line. Um, that's very indicative, you know or not necessarily indicative it's a very good diagnostic character that helps you identify fish so you got to pay the pay attention here's another example lateral line this one straight almost the perfect lateral line sort of thing that you could imagine so now <laughs> yeah now <clears throat> we're going to talk about fins We've talked about fins quite a bit, and um, I just want to make sure everyone is on the same page of when we start talking about fish, or their f a, f a fin on a fish, um, where you are, you understand where that fin is traditionally. So the first thing is the pectoral fins. These are the fins that are usually up by the gills and um on the side of the fish think of your pectoral muscles i know it seems like they're on the chest but they're like sort of the arms of the fish your arms are heavily influenced by your pectoral muscles so the pectoral fins are going to be those sort of fins then you have your pelvic fins which are going to be down near the pelvis of the fish so these are going to be your pelvic fins and your pelvic fin can be positioned in many different places and can be a key. Are they directly underneath the pectoral fins? Are they set extremely far back on the body? Um, so it is something to be aware of is the position of those. Um, so pectoral, pelvic, then you have the dorsal fin. The dorsal fin is a fin on the back of the fish. Um, and there can be two fins. You, if they're like this one, this darter right here has two dorsal fins. If a fish has two dorsal fins, the first is usually spiny. So, you know, usually your first dorsal spin is going to be consisting of very thick rays. It may not be spiny in the sense that it's going to harm you like a um, catfish spine but 
compared to the second dorsal fin which have soft rays it won't be as heavily bendable um, without necessarily breaking things but many of them will stab you if you think any largemouth bass any of the sunfish um, those that first dorsal fin can can have thick enough spines that it will hurt you and it's also important to note that on some fish the first and second dorsal fin can be fused together um, so a lot of times it may look like a fish has a singular dorsal fin but in reality they're connected still through a membrane um, another good example of this would be sort of the micropterous species the dorsal fin of those fish um, are connected through a very thin membrane largemouth bass have a very very small amount of material connecting them and stuff like the smallmouth and the guadalupe bass have significantly more membranes to where if you're not paying attention you might think that they're actually the same dorsal fin and that's not the case um now import another important thing to note i just said that the fish might have two dorsal fins this is not a dorsal fin on a catfish this is what i've talked about in the past what is called an adipose fin and an adipose pin, fin is not really a fin at all it is more like a fleshy deposit of fat basically allowing that fish to kind of store up energy um, good example think of this as a camel's hump um, this fin it's it's just a fleshy deposit of like fat and sort of nutrients um, it doesn't really influence the fish um, in any way it's it's a camel's hump essentially taken to a lesser extent um, but if you feel it it just it feels like a, just a lump of it just feels like a lump if you ever feel one of these I'm not saying they're not important but keep in mind just because it has two things on the back does not necessarily mean that it's dorsal fin you have to make very much sure that there is this is an adipose this is called an adipose fin which is not going to have any fin rays in it it's not going to have any sort of like membrane on it it's just going to be look like just skin almost like a very large skin tag there you go, there you go. that's be a good one but then you have the anal fin in the position of the anal fin the length of the anal fin the shape of the anal fin is usually is very often used in fish keys so Knowing where your anal fin is is obviously very, very, very important. And these are usually set behind the pelvic fin, going towards the caudal peduncle. But now we get to one of the more important fins, the caudal fin, which is going to be your tail fin. And there was realistically um, three types that I want to talk about. There's different variation of these types but there's three types that i feel that you should be aware of there's the homo no sorry the proto circle tail now the proto circle tail are going to be things like lampreys that is where the vertebral column does not go into either lobe and doesn't terminate um it just sort of goes to the end and this is going to be your lampreys this is usually found on your primitive fish so if you see right here the tail just kind of goes it doesn't go into either lobe and it just kind of tapers off and so your lampreys are going to be really where you uh, find this fish your hagfish things like that so the next one we want to talk about is the heterocircle tail and this is where the vert vertebral column can flex upward and it extends into the caudal fin it's not always into the top lobe of the caudal fin can go into the bottom but most of the time when we're talking about them they're going to be going up into the top these are going to be your sharks your sort of primitive fish that they call those um, gar have what are called an abbreviated heterocircle tail sharks have a, you know a full-blown heterocircle tail you can actually see right here it kicks up and you can see it going stiff all the way up into here 
and this is the rest of the dorsal fin so it went up into the upper portion of the caudal fin now a gar will go up but it'll stop about midway but it's still a heterocircle tail it's just not a full heterocircle tail so that's why it's called an abbreviated heterocircle tail but then we go into the homocircle tail and the homocircle tail would be things like your bass most of the fish actually that we talk about and know about today have these homocircle tails and this is where the vertebral column does not flex into either lobe of the caudal fin and terminates at a very i don't want to say a very specific point but um basically it terminates at a select joint um i don't re remember exactly what the plate is called but it's just it's terminating if you remember the lamprey you know did not terminate the caudal fin sort of wraps around this is where it's not terminating either and going into the caudal fin this one has that hard shut off right there and that's most fish that we're going to be talking about so that's your homo circle tails but also not even how the tail is what type of caudal fin is important the shape is very important as well and we have a couple different shapes that we want to talk about um that is not there oh sorry um the shape so we have the forked forked caudal fin which is you know just like two prongs of a fork you have this kind of going out and then a deep d curve and coming back the lunate um i am so sorry i thought i had these in order to just go back and forth i guess i missed out some so the lunate um caudal fin shape that's going to be look like a sickle moon and that's going to be your tuna and things like that if you look at this just it's essentially a more extreme forked tail uh forked caudal fin but it's got that sort of like sickle moon shape to it heavily forked would be another way but it's fairly indicative and pretty diagnostic well then you have your emarginate your marginate are going to be things like the um, largemouth bass, which is a slightly forked. Um, it's kind of hard to see. I hope you can see it there, but it's a. It's going to have just a slight bevel in it, and that's going to be your marginate. So for it's almost straight on the back, but it has a bit of a dip. Um, then you're going to have your rounded tail fins. Those are going to be things like your gambusia. And then you have your truncate caudal fins. So rounded, obviously, it's just rounded off, completely rounded off. Truncate um, is going to be very similar to this. If you look at this uh, diagram of a trout, it a truncate is it's going up and then it is very squared off. And then it comes back. Um, Sometimes that can be a little difficult to see. Sometimes they'll have slightly marginate caudal fins, things like this, but you're going for the hard shape. If you notice here, it is squared here versus the um, bass has a bit of roundness to it. It's rounding off there. So the shapes can be very important of the caudal fin to look at. So you gotta look at the type of caudal fin in the shape of the caudal fin um so granted these are only these shapes are realistically only there for your homocircle tails because if it's a heterocircle tail you're not going to have these fancy lobes and everything because the vertebral column is in the caudal fin influencing the shape <clears throat> so there's all the fins and their shapes and everything like that um so now when we're talking about some of these other fish and i say oh these are modified pectoral fins which is what these are these are modified pectoral fins on a stingray to cause them to glide um another one would be the 
lump suckers. So these, the sucking disc, it's not even a sucking disc, the disc that holds them, the suction cup, there we go, that holds them to the rocks and the corals. You see your pelvic fins here. You've got this dorsal fin, this dorsal fin, that would be your anal fin. You see a caudal fin here. So your pelvic fins are modified into that suction cup. So fins can be heavily modified, but what, which fins are being modified is very indicative in what they're being modified into. So there you go. Now you kind of hopefully can look at that. Still not done, I'm just saying, hopefully now you can look at it now. So now we're gonna talk about mouth position on the snout. So there's sort of um, a couple, there's, there's a couple of different mouth positions that you should really be aware of. There's the superior mouth position. And the superior um, mouth is going to be, doo, 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 doo. I don't have a picture. Um, I will have a picture. Things, your top water species. So if you look at this uh, mouth up here, that the bottom is usually extending much farther out and their mouth will open towards the surface of the water. That's gonna be your top water fish, things that are going right along the surface and sucking up. Um, so you just need to be, you know, look, think, imagine if that mouth opened up, which way would it be facing? That's how you sort of look at these. So opening up towards the surface is gonna be that superior mouth. The terminal mouth is gonna be things like your bass, your tuna, your, you know, things like that. It, when their mouth opens, it's going straight in the water. It's going straight in front of it. A subterminal mouth is going to be things like your catfish, where they're opening, but they're opening slightly down. They're pointed forward and a little bit down. So that's a subterminal mouth. If you compare this to a bass, the, you know, a bass, when it's going over, its nose is not really overhanging the mouth. If you look at the catfish right here, you can see that its mouth, when closed, the nose is, it's got a little bit of an overbite. So that makes it a subterminal mouth. Then you have the inferior mouth, which is going to be things like your buffalo fish, your sucker fish. Those are gonna be fish that when you open the mouth, it's almost pointed straight down. And when it's pointed straight down, it's going to, um, you know, it's, it's just pointed straight towards the floor. So that's how you can tell about the mouth position. There is technically another mouth position. I don't really like to call it a mouth position, but the sucking disc is gonna be your lampreys. Um, lampreys, things like that. The sucking disc, you kind of have to talk about it. It is technically an inferior mouth, but it's also not. It's it's a really weird way to put it. So this is a kind of the best place to talk about the sucking disc. This is not the um, sucking disc of some what some other people think. You know, like Placosmus and things like that. Those are an inferior mouth that they're um, attaching to a rock and then they're scraping their teeth. It's not real. It's not really a sucking disc. It's more just like an inferior mouth that's got modified lips. So now the final thing that we're going to be talking about is scale types. And there's three scale types that we need to talk about. Cycloid scales. Cycloid scales are um, scales that have just circular rings. They're very um, basic looking. You might think when you think of fish scale, this might be what you kind of envision in your head. It's just these circular rings and you know, it's, it's a fine scale. Um, there's nothing bad about it. A lot of fish have cycloid scales. Um, you know, they're just your, your sort of basic scale. The next scale that we need to talk about is the tenoid scale. And this is what a tenoid scale looks like. Um, 
over um, underneath the microscope. Your tenoid scales, now granted this one's a little super abbreviated actually. It's very, it can be squared off, It's it's got a, just a different body shape. You got this area that has this V shape where um, you know usually have thicker lines. Sometimes they're not as prevalent in there, but it's, it's usually got this V. I don't remember what this region of the scale is called. I do know that these are called the teeny. Um, the teeny are what are helping lock the scale in place and they're attaching them to this to the um, body. So the teeny are up here. You're usually not going to see these unless you pull them out and really look for them because this is a part this is the anterior portion of the scale, meaning that that's the scale, part of the scale that's underneath um, other scales and attaching to the body. So this is a tenoid scale versus the cycloid scale has no, um, it's overlapped right here and it's just kind of in the body by just a simple flush attachment. So usually these scales are smaller and can be pulled off much more easily than things like the tenoid scale, which is barbed inside of the fish. But then the next scale that we need to talk about is the ganoid scale. These are gonna be your armor your armored fish your gars things like that and that's a thick plate that's has that's a thick plate and it interlocks with each other um you know how gar scales look and i really wanted to show this next tab which had a very very good description there's the focus of the scale the centroid of the scale there's a usually small peg here but then the base and it's almost backwards so it took me a long time to get this through my head so the tenoid scale has these teeny and that's towards the front of the fish the anterior portion of the um of the scale versus the ganoid all the base and everything is towards the back of the fish so it's almost interlocked backwards um it's really awkward for me um, I don't, it's, it's still to this day hard for me to picture. I always want to flip the scale and put the base and everything towards the head of the fish. Um, so, but that's the ganoid scale. These are going to be, you know, gar sturgeon paddlefish. You're very thick, sort of primitive armored sort of fish. Um, and as you can see, they were used even in, um, native native people's weaponry like arrowheads and things like this <clears throat> so now i hope you enjoyed this video i know i enjoyed putting it on we've talked about so many things today you might have to take a break i do not blame you this video is very long but i think it was really important because we've i've talked about so many fish over almost three years and it's hard to believe we've been doing this almost three years straight now I've talked about all these sort of things and but I never actually explained how a fish is looking like what are we looking at I just always say oh the pelvic fin which is right here but I feel like we need to know it's a good idea I probably should have done this video a hundred videos ago on the basic fish morphology that you need to really keep a thinking you th really need to think about when you're looking at a fish so regardless thank you guys so much again i really appreciate it hope to see you again if i don't please be safe have a great day please leave a like comment and subscribe if you do i'd really appreciate it hope to see you again if you'd like to support the channel please click the link down below it is by no means um required but it is greatly appreciated i hope you have a wonderful weekend and i hope you enjoyed this Fish Friday number 150. Um, I know I definitely enjoy doing this. But take care of yourselves, take care of your loved ones, and peace.